Guys, let's talk. Ever since the beginning of 2021, Voice embarked on an ambitious project with the hopes of recording instances of human rights violations faced by international students in the northern part of Cyprus. The purpose of the project is to shed light on all forms of human rights violations faced by international students and with it, try our best to provide support to the survivors. The hope is that by recording and compiling cases of human rights violations in a scientific and organized matter with data and statistics of every quarter, we can contribute to the betterment of the northern part of Cyprus for it to become a more student-friendly island. On the 2nd of December 2021, uh, two students, two normal students, black students who were in Lefkosha, they walked into a market just going around their day and they wanted to buy some groceries in a very, very normal day. Inside the market, uh, to the shock and surprise of, of, of maybe you are listening right now, there was one local uh, man, an old man inside the market, who went outside and he came back and he actually shot one of the students. He shot him with what we believe is a hunting gun and the student sent us a picture actually of the gunshot and it was a very graphic picture. Uh, and if that's not enough, because that's not the end of the story, in, a, in an example of, of unfairness, and complete absurdity, the man told them that if you don't leave, I'm going to call the police on you to, to kick you out and arrest you actually. All because he claimed that they were making noise. The students left the market and went to the hospital to be treated. And although for a certain period they tried to follow legal action and we tried to support them, the student had just graduated. So they did not want further trouble in the country. So they just left the country and abandoned the case. On December 20th of 2021, voice representatives were alerted of two sex trafficking cases in the northern part of Cyprus. Upon arrival, the survivors' passports were confiscated by their traffickers who claimed to be university agents. The traffickers have told the survivors that they are in debt and they have to pay back by engaging in sexual activities. One of the survivors managed to escape while doing her PCR test, however, unfortunately, the second one was unable to escape and had to engage in sex work for two months. And when she communicated her refusal, they beat her, whip her, and isolate her in a locked room. In the 13th of January, 2021, the voice representative got in contact with the survivor of domestic violence uh, who had been subjected to physical violence from her boyfriend in Pomogusta. He was brutally beaten her until the intervention of the voice member. Unfortunately, by then, she had already sustained severe head injuries, back pain, and swollen ankles. Uh, fortunately, the voice members managed to separate the victim from the abuser, uh, provide her with shelter, and further help her with transportation to her family member's home. On the 29th of October, police arrived at a party in Guzelet after receiving a noise complaint. It was reported to voice the police officers seemingly targeted international students and to this the international students objected. The situation escalated when one police officer used the word Zanji, which is a slur word against black people. At this point, one international student started recording, which the police deemed illegal. The police uh, and then uh, broke the phone and started tackling and even holding one person in a chokehold position. The police arrested them and took them to a jail cell for the whole night without cause or explanation. After this, the police made them sign a statement, which needless to say, did not mention anything about the police mentioning the word Zenchi or, being, uh, or harassing or being violent against them. In turn, it said the statement stated that the students were arrested because they were behaving aggressively and that's why they were arrested.
in order to defend our rights, I think we need to know what are our rights. And I can understand that there might be a language barrier as well as the context might be different than the countries that we are uh, coming from. But the best thing is, I think, to contact uh, the activists uh, or civil society organizations or allies um, to have support, like translation or legal or psychological or social support in that sense, because it might be difficult to tackle with these human rights violations. But the next step after un understanding the situation, I think we can, um, we can work all together to tackle with these issues. Uh, everybody has responsibility to defend our rights, but of course, in a legal system, it's the judiciary system, it's the policers and, um, and the lawyers that are the ones who are working actually professionally in that sense to protect our rights. So we need to demand our rights from these authorities. And in order to do that in a better uh, manner, we need to mobilize, I think, get together. We can demand our rights even in a social circle by just voicing out um, the right, which rights are being violated and how we want them to be solved. But this can be also through a lawyer and we can sue actually um, the ones that are violating our rights. So in the governmental level, this can be done. But as well as there are some international mechanisms that where we can uh, defend our rights. Now students, even before arriving to the northern part of Cyprus, become vulnerable. Since uh, due to the fact that they most often rely on a person or an agent that will advise them to come here for education purposes. So if that person or the agency overall has kind of um, not told the truth to the international students, then the international student would find themselves in a very fragile and vulnerable situation once they arrive to the northern part of Cyprus. The problem in the northern part of Cyprus is that there is no established human rights protection mechanisms that are easily accessible. What I mean by that is that when a student or anyone in the territory faces a human rights violation, um, the last result should be to go to the court because going to the court is very expensive and, no, and uh, not many people can have access to this kind of um, route. So there should be human rights protection mechanisms, administrative mechanisms that are easily accessible for everyone that can solve problems when they arise in a, in a faster and easier manner. So this is lacking in the London part of Cyprus. The second thing is that the administrative bodies the local bodies overall, they lack the capacity to provide services in English or in any other languages. So international students, if they don't know Turkish, and in most of the case, they don't, of course, that would be very difficult for them to reach to the relevant duty bearers, and in that case, the local bodies, to explain about their problems and seek for any kind of uh, resolvement, basically. So um, access, so any kind of local bodies is also very restricted.